Osmosis, on the other hand, involves when water mu moves. Um, and so if it's the movement of water from an area of higher to lesser, um, then we call it osmosis. And that has to happen through a semipermeable membrane. Um, this is an example. You get on this side of the beaker, side A, you have 5% albumin um, through a semipermeable membrane here in the middle and a 10% albumin solution. So when you look at that, you know that there's more albumin in this side than there is this side. So there's more albumin here, which means that there's looser water molecules over here and less albumin. So what happens is the water, where there's more water, is going to pass through the semipermeable membrane to diffuse the amount of albumin on this side. And so we come up with an equal concentration of solution, 7.5% albumin. Now that's osmosis. I put this yummy gummy through a science experiment that models what happens to a cell in an environment that's more watery than the cell is inside. And what I saw came as no surprise. My gummy expanded, quintupled in weight. My gummy expanded and increased so great. So listen up as Mr. W explains this. It's all about osmosis. Osmosis is the diffusion of water across a membrane or a water permeable border, diffusing like all molecules in fluid situations from higher to lower concentration. Osmosis, H2O diffusing. Osmosis, see the water losing. Hypotonic to hypertonic flow. Osmosis, let's go. Let's talk about our gummy and osmotic terms. Hypotonic, hypertonic, isotonic are the words you can use to discuss water's watery diffusion. Learn them well to avoid confusion. Hypotonic means higher water concentration and relatively lower solute concentration. Hypertonic is the opposite percent of water's less with more solute dissolved inside as you might guess. So let's take these terms and apply them to our gummy bear. I'm looking at the package and seeing what it says here. It's bear is mostly sugar with some other stuff mixed in and holding it together is the protein gelatin. So when you put a gummy in a cup of H2O, it's readily apparent that the gummy is so hypertonic to the water that it's in, and the water's hypotonic to our little gummy friend. And so through osmosis, the water will diffuse into the gummy, which soon will look so huge. The mass it gains is water, which will infiltrate the gummy, which one day later is looking pretty funny. Osmosis, H2O diffusing. Osmosis, see the water oozing. Hypotonic to hypertonic flow. Go. Next, I took this freshwater plant, name is Elodia. It lives in lakes and ponds, never in the salty sea. In freshwater, Elodia cells are full and firm. It's all about osmosis, as we're going to confirm. See, the cells are hypertonic to their watery exterior, so water will diffuse into the cell's interior, expanding the membrane, pushing it against the wall. In fact, you can't see the membrane at all. But add some salty water, so the outside's hypertonic, and water leaves the hypotonic cells. It's so osmotic. The membrane leaves the wall, the cells inside the scrunch, with the chlora plus stuck together in a bunch. That's why at the grocery store they always have that mister. The water on the veggies helps to keep them crisper. The droplets on the veggies are a hypotonic brew. Osmosis moves the water in the veggies look brand new. Dried fruit and beef jerky preservation is osmotic. Their low water content makes the dried food hypertonic. So any germs are multiple upon them lose their water and die and don't contaminate the dried food in the larder. Osmosis. H2O diffusing. Osmosis. See the water losing. Hypotonic to hypertonic flow. Let's go. Animals, cells in situations hypertonic, lose their water, shrink and shrivel, look so sick. But an animal, cell in hypotonic abode, gains water and expands, eventually explodes, cause animal cells, lack a wall of course, so nothing pushes back at the osmotic force. Water flows from hypotonic to the hypertonic cell, which bursts, cause the membrane can't stop the swell. If you want to keep a frog heart outside a body beating, an isotonic fluid is what you'll be needing. Water concentration, same on each side of the cell, no gain or loss water, the cells feel so swell, and a paramecium, which lives in ponds and lakes, constantly fights osmotic water uptake, the contractile vacuoles of pumping adaptation to deal with this osmotic situation. Osmosis, H2O diffusing, osmosis, see the water losing, hypotonic to hypertonic flow, osmosis, let's go.
Tonicity refers to these concentrations. An isotonic solution has the same concentration. So the fluid around the cell has the same concentration as the fluid within the cell. We refer to a solution with a higher concentration than what's in the cell as hypertonic. And a lower concentration than in the, than in the cell we call hypotonic. And this becomes important to us in medicine when we're giving solutions to patients um, that either we want to pull certain fluids out of them or put fluids back in them determines what kind of solution tonicity we're going to be using. At this point, there's a film I'd like you to, to watch um, that's a little rap about osmosis. Filtration. Filtration requires pressure. So it is an example of when you have particles, in this instance they're, they're showing you red blood cells, that can move across under pressure. So they're, gonna go, they're being forced through the membrane from a an area of higher pressure to an area of lower pressure outside. Um, an example of this in our bodies is the kidneys. And when we study the urological system, when we talk in depth about the kidney, this, this concept is going to become very important. This is facilitated diffusion, as we talked about. One of the examples is insulin. Uh, what happens is from the high concentration to the low concentration, again, whatever the solute is, it can't get through. It's not the right shape. It can't pass through the protein. And so it picks up a carrier which changes the shape and makes it able to go through. Facilitated diffusion. The sodium-potassium pump is super important to the body. It is the way that the cells maintain volume, the correct volume within the cells. It's how we do nerve impulses travel. Um, it plays a role in thermoregulation. Uh, what happens here is, and you can see the red are the sodiums uh, and the green boxes are potassium. And with the use of a huge amount of ATP or energy, the body uh, pumps that sodium out and pumps potassium into the cell. And in that process then um, can establish a pulling out or putting in whatever we need to within the cells. The important part to remember about it is that it uses ATP or energy. Or we can transport by vesicle survival.